The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada is the power of engineering. Help you. Yes, you found the things you need on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what is on the Great Search this week? Okay, so this week we had a request for, uh, well, uh, from my, me. Like, I had a request to make this board, but then I'm the one who's looking for the part. I'm looking for a small, low-cost, analog switch that surface mount and can, 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 can switch up to 12 volt signals but the signal that's controlling that you use to control it up and down um should be like three volts compatible so basically you can use a three volt signal to control spdd spdt 12 volt analog switch and um i just talked about a few minutes ago i was doing a design with um i squared c multiplexers and i picked the AGG 728 and uh, let's see if you buy 728 and 729. Those are I2C compatible, which is like super awesome, but they're only five volt max. I, I need that 12 volt compatibility. So let's go to DigiKey and let's look for analog switch. Okay, analog switches, multiplexers, and demultiplexers. Sounds good. Now, the difference between an analog and digital switch is this one, you know, if you put audio in, you'll get audio out, whereas there are multiplexers that work with digital signal, but like I2C is really common or UART. But with those, you can't put analog signals in. It won't work. They're looking for specifically digital, like zero to three volts only. This is analog switching. So um, it'll work with digital signals, although maybe not as fast. But it's really good for is like your know, potentiometer signals, audio, video, um, test signals. You know, I, apparently these are, this is like weird. Every time I look at a data sheet for one of these devices, it says like ultrasonic, like, you know, like sensing stuff where you have, um, uh signal coming in from a sensor and you want to switch it around to a different location okay so here's all the analog switches multiplexers and multiplexers about ten thousand options so first off i'm always you know i'm always looking for only active um available and i want only surface mount so i'm going to skip the through hole and i'm going to say normally stocking so that gets rid of like two thirds of the options just because, you know, I'm not, I'm not dealing with, uh, um, uh, stuff that's through hole, which is like a lot of the, like the 4066 or 4051 type. Next up, I definitely want to have the voltage for the power supply. Remember I said that has to do at least 12 volts. So that's going to also filter out a lot because there's a lot of three or five volt only, uh, devices. So let's look. So the only thing is, is that the, the supply, the way it's done is it has like a little squiggle telling you to and from here I'll put it above my head. So you actually have to go through and like pick through each one. So for example, this one is going to work. Cause it's one to eight, eight, 1 8 1.8 to 12 volts. And then this one is 10 12 volts, not enough. 12 volts, 12.16, 15, 16. 12, 12, 12, 13.2, 15, 16, 16, 12, 15, 16. This is a little tedious, but go through and do them all. 15, 16. And then I want to make sure that this works at 3.3 volts. So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to keep going because then it's like 5 to 20 volts, but it needs to work at 3.3. So these are the ones that work within the range that's valid. Okay, so now I've got um, much fewer, like 500 options. Next up, um, I definitely don't want, I don't need like some of these ones that are like multi connection and stuff. I'll say that one thing you'll notice that there, there's a lot in like, a, you know, a certain family, like the 4050 ones. But one of the trade offs about these uh, CMOS analog switches is if you look at the data sheet, hopefully it'll come up. Okay. They will work at high voltages, 12 volts, 18 volts, whatever, but um, I should have popped up the data sheet beforehand. If you look at the V high for them, the V in high, which is quiescent, propagation delay. Okay. V input high voltage. In order to trigger it, 
you know, at um, 10 volts or, you know, if you're, if you're powering it from 10 volts, you need a seven volt signal to power it, which is not what I want. I want to be able to not power it, to signal it. I want to signal it with a low voltage, like three volts or so. And so a lot of those um, analog switches that are like the CD 4051, 4066, there's, there's not going to work because of that issue. Uh, and there's no real way to select them out. Um, one thing I'll say is I definitely want like an SPDT. So I'm going to just select the SPDT options. And then I definitely want, don't want the SPST, which is just like on off. I want to have SPDT for normally open, normally closed. Although I'll grab the DPST, I don't know, the other way around and the DPDT also. So let's filter that out. So it gives me a hundred options. Um, and then number of circuits. I really only need one circuit. So let's, let's filter that out. And now I've got 26 options. Oh, last, I'm going to exclude the marketplace just to get rid of anything that isn't immediately stocked. Okay. So now if you sort by price, you have a couple of good options. Um, the DG419 TS, um, 12A. So a couple of uh, different ones in the family. Um, I did look at a bunch of these, all of them were good. I'm you know, familiar with the Max 4544, so that's what I picked. However, um, I will say that like the DG419 is also um, totally good. And a lot of these, you know, they have equivalent, uh, they have equivalent pinouts. And then if you look at the V, I, V input high, which is, Hold on, I gotta find it in this. Well, I can definitely find it on the max because I remember I looked this this part up. Each data sheet, it's like you want to find the info and it's not always in the same location. So this one, V input high. So we see it here, the V input high, no matter what the voltage is, um, it's going to be happy at 2.4 volts. And so that means I can trigger it for sure from a 3.3 volt signal. So I did in the end pick the 4544 just because I'm a little familiar with it and it had a lot of stock. Um, but I'll say that the DG419 was also a good option. So you have a couple varieties that are available here. Um, but what's nice about this is like the layout was very simple and the usage was very simple. Um, so I'm going to try this out and get a prototype made and probably like in a week or two, I'll do a show where I talk about how well it worked. Maybe I'll try switching some analog signals around um, and see how it goes. So that's my pick for the great search. Wait.